Dude, there's a ton of news coming out about the upcoming 2020 Ram Heavy Duty. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of information that's coming out, both stuff that's fact and stuff that, uh, well, frankly, is guesswork. Yeah, so let's separate fact from rumor, mm -hmm. and let's actually organize the, the top five, and because all of us are excited about the new truck. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, so let's kick it off with the uh, engines. Okay. Right, so currently Ram is offering several engine choices and actually several power levels in right. the trucks. The 5.7 Hemi, right. 6.4 Hemi, mm -hmm. and several versions of the 6.7 Cummins straight six because they have different power levels for three quarter tons and one tons. Right. So here's a question, is the 5.7 gonna remain? Okay, and that is a really good question and there's two schools of thought. One is that the 5.7 is no longer efficient enough to be in that truck, nor is it powerful enough to be in that truck. Mm -hmm. So basically people are saying, no, it's not gonna be there. Yeah, but this is still rumor. Ram has not announced the engine lineup. Actually, they haven't announced much. No. What they did say is they're moving production of the heavy duty truck from Mexico to Michigan. That's right. Which is, uh, you know, I think a great move. Um, and the Warren truck plant is where the new heavy duty is going to be built. That's right. They invested a billion dollars in order to update the plant and uh, they should be ready to go with construction uh, like now and eventually production like within the next six months. Well, yeah. So they did make an announcement in their forward looking statement right. that the new Ram heavy duty is coming that's the quote, right? in January of 2019. Mm -hmm. But how do we read that? Well, it's either going to be it actually hits the dealerships or it's actually out there hitting the uh, car show segments, right? The, I think it's the latter. Yeah, so you'll see it at the first auto show January. That's going to be the Detroit auto show. Yeah, I think they're going to make a splash with the truck, you know, unveil it properly in Detroit at the Detroit auto show. And then I think it'll take several months to actually bring it to market. Because remember, if they're still launching still the light duty 1500. <laughs> yeah, and along with it, they have the classic next to it. And I have a feeling that's helping them pad their numbers because production on a new truck isn't an easy thing. There's information that the engine blocks are gonna be now CGI. Yeah, that's compacted graphite iron. Yeah. And basically it's a new technique that allows engine blocks to supposedly last longer, uh, to handle corrosion better, and to have better longevity when it comes to heat displacement because the amount of heat that it gets, it's actually able to get rid of it quicker. And like Ford is using that technology currently in their engines like EcoBoost and also their Power Stroke. Yeah, so, so it actually has the ability to be used both on a gas and diesel engine. They even use them in uh, turbochargers as well for the uh, casing. Okay, so that we don't know if it's coming, but it makes sense. It does. Right, uh, now everybody wants to know when is that diesel Cummins going to make a thousand pound feet of torque? Well, I don't know if there's some sort of gentleman's agreement about that or whatever. Uh, I mean, what is it now? The highest torque is in the 930 range? Yeah, 930, yeah. Okay, so maybe it'll go up to 940 or 933. .3. I think it'll be more gradual. Right? Yeah. A lot of people are saying maybe 980 pound feet of torque. We'll see. Um, but we have to move on to number four, which is transmissions, because you've got to put that torque down somewhere. Yeah, it's a story within itself. Yeah, and there's a lot of news around this, actually. So recently, ZF, which is a manufacturer of transmissions, yep. uh, came out with a prototype, which was a Ram 3500, with a new 8-speed heavy-duty in, in tr transmission in it. Right. Now, this has nothing to do with the same 8-speed that is used in other vehicles or the other one that's used in the light duty. Right. Yeah. This is its own thing. It's beefed up. Right. right. It's a bigger. Well, not. I don't know if it's physically larger, but the components are, you know, more heavy duty. Right. Um, so we don't know if Ram is actually going there. ZF just unveiled the prototype. Right. And they said it's, it's possible for this truck to have this. Well, what do we have now? We have a six-speed uh, uh, ASIN. ASIN. Right. Yeah. yeah. So currently the ASIN is there, and it's a good transmission, right? right? Um, so it might continue, so we don't know if it's the six-speed will continue or if it'll be an eight-speed ASIN or an eight-speed ZF. So still to come, in official inf information still to come. Right, and the other rumor is about what they might be getting rid of. Yeah. Yeah, which is the six-speed manual transmission. Yeah, unfortunately, there's still a, there's a rumor flying out there that the manual is on the way out. Yeah. Well, all the manufacturers are actually moving there, right? Right, this would, well, actually, Ram is the last auto manufacturer in the United States 
that has a heavy duty vehicle that has a manual option. Yeah, and I don't know if that's very popular for them, so it depends. If they're selling a lot of them, they'll continue. If not, yeah, not. Yeah, I'm sure they have to cut the fat at some point in time, so it's kind of a bummer, but we'll see what happens. We don't know for sure. Let's move on to design and style. Right. Um, so several manufacturers have done this where the light duty truck shares the cab with the heavy duty truck. So just look at Ford, the Super Duty versus F-150. Yep. So we think they're going to continue with this. Ram is going to do that as well. Which means a larger cab internally with all of the modern creature comforts that the new truck has. Yeah, that means four inches longer overall for the cab, which a lot of it goes to the rear seat. Yep. So that also means that the mega cab, you know, that extra, extra long cab that they've had now, that's probably going to go away because the new cab is actually almost as big. Right. I mean, it makes sense that they would do something like that. But then you have to ask the question, if they're going to do that with the cab, what are they going to do with the beds? Yeah. You know, and I think it's fair to assume that they're going to have a six foot and eight foot bed or something within the, you know, close right. to those numbers. And also aluminum, you know, that's the question as well, right? How much aluminum are they going to use? Right. Now, General Motors currently has aluminum on their newest truck that's coming out real soon on all the hinged components, doors, hood, tailgate, and what have you. And it's said that, you know, lighter weight is the way to go, so why not do it with the heavy-duty truck and then start that with, of course, the Ram. So, But I think the good news here is that the interior on the new 1900 or 2019 1500 ram is so good mm -hmm. you know the rebel oh, etc etc et yeah, yeah. so i think a lot of it will be transferred probably if they're using the same cab yeah so it'll turn into a really comfortable you know high-tech cab which is of course what a lot of you guys want and i think there's some spy shots of current trucks running i mean the prototypes running around yep and it looks like the grills are similar yeah they might be larger to differentiate them yeah the, now the new 1500 has the squinty eye look uh, I like to call it the Clint Eastwood face, and um, I would imagine it's going to be very similar on the heavy duty, but they might have a larger grill, the same way they do it now, with a slightly different design, or perhaps they'll have the headlights a little bit larger. But I don't think it's going to be that different. I think that it's going to be a family resemblance that'll really cross over. Well, let's move on next to technology, right? Trucks are getting more and more uh full packed full of tech oh especially cameras and whatnot oh yeah absolutely so i'm sure ram is going to go for the 360 degree camera i mm -hmm. mean that's probably a given because look at the competition right everybody's going there yeah um and then there's a lot of trailering technique you know technologies that they could add sure sure J just look at ford well yeah i mean they could take a they could take a page from both ford and general motors and they could have a system set up with a remote camera on the end of a trailer. They could have a system set up to where you have a steering assist that's actually going to the front of the trailer or right out of the cab where you have two or three different cameras pointed at the, the trailer. I mean, the possibilities are almost limitless based on what new camera technology can represent. And RAM and FCA are very good at this kind of pioneering some of the technology. So they might do something that we haven't seen before. Right, you know, know, shoot a drone out of the roof or whatever. Right, picks up the trailer and moves it right, forward. Right, right, right. No, but but they're very good at that stuff yeah. with the leading technologies like the RAM box in the bed. Yeah. You know, those extra storage compartments. Which now or, everybody's kind of copying, but poorly. Yeah, yeah. yeah so uh, I think there's a lot of excitement there. Yep. And finally, let's talk about capability before we get to the bonus. Yeah. So capability is a big point of heavy duty trucks. Yeah, I mean, both with towing and with uh, cargo capacity and, and you know, whatnot, it's, it's incredibly important. So Ford kind of threw down the gauntlet and they're actually classifying their 450, F450 truck as, you know, this class three truck. And that's arguable, right? Yeah. You could argue that the 450 is, you know, class four and above and it doesn't count. But as soon as you um, adjust its gross vehicle weight, you know, it, all of a sudden it competes. Right. But 34,000 pounds is the current number. And that is on a rear drive only vehicle. Am I yeah, correct? for yeah. F450. So that's kind of a benchmark. You know, you could argue maybe it's not a benchmark, but I think Ram, you know, is looking to probably reach that or maybe surpass that number. Now, can you imagine if they did what they'd be saying, you know, with PR? Oh, we beat this vehicle, which is in a totally different class, but we beat them anyway. Yeah, and it's going to be... The hell of a really good PR. It's, it's, capability is huge with heavy duty trucks. So as soon as you can carry more payload or tow more, that's a big selling point. Yeah. And I think Ram has done that in the past. Oh, they're going to do it again without yeah. a doubt. And then so will Chevy and so will Ford and all around. So we'll have to go. see exactly what the numbers will be. And then finally, Power Wagon. Power Wagon! Yay! 
There were some prototype shots. There were, and those prototype shots, we, we got a chance to really scrutinize them, and there are a couple things we know right off the bat. Solid front axle looks like it's gonna stay. Very good. And that front winch is going to stay, at least on the prototypes we saw running around. Now, it looked like it was about the same physical size as the current model, both with the height and, and even wheels, all that stuff looked like tires. the same. But these are also test needles, so it's possible that there could be a completely different power train underneath, which would be interesting. Well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? The power wagon is already a great off-road rig. It is. With the axles and the frame, you know, they might update their frames, right? So we don't know what's underneath. Yeah, we don't. So, and considering what they've done with a light duty truck, it could be, you know, awesome new frame. Yeah, and we got a lecture from one of the uh, Ram PR people about wider tires and taller tires. So we're only going to assume right now that they're going to be a lot of carryover components and that other things like larger, wider tires, possibly different wheels, all that other stuff, I don't know if that's going to happen right away. And that's all we know at this point, really. You know, some of you guys have asked about the 7 liter V8. No news on that whatsoever. No, and we may not ever see that engine actually. Yeah, I, I honestly don't think there's going to be too many automakers out there that are going to go for larger displacement at this point in time. I think displacement is going to start shrinking, or it already has in many cases, and I think it's going to continue. Yeah, as soon as the engines get more high-tech, more efficient, more powerful, makes sense you yeah. know, to, to actually do that. Thanks for watching and go back to tfltruck.com for more news, views, and real-world truck reviews.